Confused by finances, investing, estate and retirement planning? Well, I went to school so you don't have to. Welcome to Finances and with Kathy and Jennifer. Welcome to Finances and. I'm Jennifer and I'm here with Kathy. Today we'll be discussing passive income. You got to go on a trip recently. How did that go? It was wonderful. I took a spontaneous road trip this weekend <laughs> to visit family. It was just a lovely drive through Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and just wonderful time spent with them. It was great. That sounds beautiful. I, I'm on spring break right now and just being outside and being able to go running and biking and be outdoors. It's a, it's a nice treat after being cooped up for winter and other reasons recently too. Absolutely. It's been a long winter. <laughs> Very much. All right. So we're talking about passive income today. Mm -hmm. So passive income means spending money up front and then it starts to make money on its own later. And passive income is really appealing to many people as a way to make additional money that will then allow them to spend their time on other more meaningful things. I know that's that's why when I think of passive income, I get really excited about the possibility of passive income for that reason. Yeah. And then you're really just, like you said, doing things that you want to do, but but what you've already put in place is making money for you. Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense. Passive income, though, is going to require one of two things. You are going to either need to invest your time up front and do something to make that passive income work for you, or you're going to have to invest some money up front, possibly both. But the reality is you're going to have to do something to make this passive income start working for you. Right. It has to be set up. You do have to put in some work still, but hopefully then over time it can it can be paid back to you in passive income. We found several different ways you can create passive income. One way is simply buying stocks that return dividends. And that means that the company you own pays you regular payments for owning a portion of the company. These companies are often well-established with a long track record of distributing money back to their shareholders. And they're often paid out quarterly. I went to Investopedia because I really trust them as a resource, and they provided information on five top dividend stocks as of March 24th, 2021. However, these are just examples of companies that provide a dividend. They are not the only ones by any means, but the five that they had listed as examples were at Equitrans Midstream Corp, and you can find them at ETRN, and they paid 7.48% as their annual dividend yield. Gaming and Leisure Properties Incorporated at GLPI paid 6.27%. Brandywine Realty Trust, BDN, paid out five and nine-sixths a percent. PPL Corp at PPL paid out five at 0.84%. And New York Community Band Corp Incorporated, NYCB, paid out five and seven fourths percent. As with any investing, though, you need to go look and see what these people are selling. And if you believe in that product and if they appear to be something that you'd be willing to invest in, these are merely examples of high dividend yield companies. Dividends are paid out quarterly over the course of a year. And so you would get a percentage of that for an annual return of seven, four, eight percent or whatever the percent is. So rental property is another way of making passive money. This is actually something that my husband and I have invested in in the past couple of years. And so again, like anything else, you are going to have to, you will have costs up front. So you have to purchase the property up front. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into this. A part of it's going to depend on like, the initial deal that you get on the house and how much you pay for the house to begin with. How much work does the house need before you can get renters into it? And then there's obviously the continued cost of upkeep for a home that you're going to have to take care of. If you get good renters and get them in there and you have a solid property that doesn't require a lot of maintenance, then it can be a really great way to have that passive income over time. All homes are going to require some kind of maintenance. If you're handy enough to take care of those things, then you're not going to have to pay someone else to come out. So that will help minimize some of your cost and your time. But ultimately, you could also decide if you have lots of properties that it's something that you want to have a management company manage for you and take care of those types of late night water heaters breaking type you know activities. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like it would become even more passive by doing that, although you're putting more money into it at that point. But yes. Mm -hmm. So then along with like having a rental property, then you could also consider renting out a room or your home on Airbnb or Verbo. 
And these rentals are great money makers once you put the time in to create a special place that others will want to rent. So again, you've got some upfront cost and upfront work of getting the space ready and maybe even a little bit as people come and go and like cleaning costs and all that kind of upkeep. But again, a great way to, you know, kind of it's a great way to use the capital and the resources that you already have. Like you already have your home. That's a resource you already have. You already are paying for. So it's a great way to use that resource to get that passive income. I love that. You know, when I was reading about Airbnb, which funny story started off with air bed and breakfast. It was literally an air mattress and they offered, which was the bed and breakfast. That's how, that's where the name comes from. But they also offer something called Airbnb experiences and it allows you to host meetings or events or even tours of your city. Right now they offered their top experiences were currently, most of these things were online for obvious reasons, but a chef would come in and make street tacos with you or play mystery escape games or teach you about coffees and things like that. So they could pay you a per person fee if you have something that you are already good at and you want to share with other people. There's making pasta with grandmas. There's learning to draw. There's meet my sheep on the farm. So again, there's all kinds of experiences that if it's already something that's in your wheelhouse that now you might need to invest in some video equipment, but you can offer this to other people. And then once we can get back out again, people could actually come and be with you or you could be with them in their home. Other ways that using your passion already to make money and you can do it in small bits of time. Yeah, that sounds so cool. I remember last year when we could travel around the world, <laughs> searching Airbnb and seeing all the cool experiences that, that are offered. <laughs> Don't ignore other traditional ways of making money though, which is just saving your money. High yield accounts and money market funds are ways that you can make additional interest besides just putting it into savings because they're going to hold on to your money for a set period of time, say three months or six months or a year. The longer you allow them to hold your money and they're going to use it for something, the longer you let them hold your money, the higher the interest rate that you can get. So if you know that you are going to just pop your money into a savings account, it's going to sit there for years or a year. Go ahead and try one of these money market accounts. There's no risk involved, especially if you go through a bank because it's insured with the FDIC as long as it's less than 250000 But So there's no risk for it. You're not going to be able to get the money back for that, again, a few months, but you're going to be able to make an interest rate on it because savings isn't really paying you any interest rate. Mm -hmm. Examples of money market accounts are Brio Direct, and they have a 0.6% interest rate with a minimum balance of $100. CGF Community Bank has a 0.56% interest rate with a minimum balance of $1,000. And First Internet Bank has a 0.5% interest rate and again, $100 minimum balance. You know, something I just thought of was that, you know, cash rewards or cash back rewards with your credit cards, that's passive income. You know, if you're, if don't buy things just to get the rewards, but if you're already buying your groceries or paying for some bills with your credit card and then just paying your credit card bill, absolutely take advantage of those because whether you get the items or you use them for gifts for other people or travel, that's absolutely passive income coming there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of the high yield accounts that we found, Marcus by Goldman Sachs, that has a 0.5% interest rate and there's no minimum balance on that. American Express National Bank has a 0.4% interest rate and no minimum balance. And Vero Savings Account has a 0.2% interest rate. And again, no minimum balance on that. You know, the next thing is really kind of like the Airbnb experiences we were just talking about is looking at what are you good at? You could create a class on a skill that you already have, whether you're good at art or music or dancing, but you could start a class online. There is a website called Udemy that people pay about $12 a class for, and they listed all kinds of subjects like design, marketing, IT and software. They had business skills, photography and music. Those are just the top categories they had listed, but they had all kinds of classes that were available. And if it's something that you're already good at and you can teach someone else how to do it, once you've made your first recording, you're done. And so that is passive for you. Obviously, if you're really good at it, you're going to want to continue to make them though. So you can continue to make more and more money. Mm -hmm. Instagram also offers money for followers as does TikTok and YouTube. Also writing a blog. So find a niche that people will follow and consistently provide content. And that is the key. The companies pay you based on how many people see your post or is it your website because you bring viewers to those pages. The real trick again is 
posting and posting consistently. So if you don't see that as passive to be able to keep viewers up and keep people coming to your site or your blog or whatever it is, then that may not be for you. You're certainly going to need to commit that time to creating content and posting it. But once it's up, especially like with YouTube videos, you know, like once they're up, then they're up. So even people going and watching old ones, like you're still getting that passive income. I mean, the reality is what Jennifer and I do here as well is it's once it's out there, it's out there. So once you've put out your content, then it's there for people to refer to and, and use for their own education. So the consistency of it, but also just doing what you love doing is going to be the key. Creating something like an app is another way to make money. But the truth is that like everything we've been talking about to here today, except possibly real estate and investing, it's always going to require ongoing management. You can create an app, but even if it doesn't require you to do something to it, at some point, you're going to have to update it either for with system updates or even features. If people really love it, they might you know be asking you for more features. So these things are going to require your attention but they're not going to require your attention like an eight hour a day job does. These are the things that you want to be doing. And if you choose not to do them, you can just stop doing them. Another idea is to sell your photography. So you could take your love and your passion for photography and then sell the prints that you make. You could sell them on stock photo sites by posting your pictures on the sites like Shopify, Burst, Pexels, or Unsplash. And then people choose art for their websites or whatever they need it for. And you are paid from that. That's even that's exactly what we did here for the intro and outro music for the podcast. We found that on a stock site. Whoever created that music then gets paid for it. So you can even consider selling music if that's your gift. You can also, if you've written any books or you're interested in writing books, you can sell them online. A friend of mine wrote a book called For Want of Knowledge and sells it on Amazon. And honestly, it's not very expensive. I read it. It's an amazing little story, but it costs like $3.99. And it's a great way to get your writing out there and continue to make income. I mean, once the story's written, now it's just a matter of if people are going to be interested in purchasing it. It is a competitive market, but if you love to write, you can get stuff out there and make a profit on it. Mm -hmm. So we also read a story about a woman who wanted to make some money while pregnant with her son, and she was hoping to make $500 a month until his birth. It turns out that 18 months later, she was making six figures and works on it for about one to two hours weekly writing, writing her content while being able to take three or four weeks off at a time. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm sure she's probably put in quite a bit of upfront work to get to that point, but that's that's a pretty awesome, awesome goal. And it, again... It's got to be something that she wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. So she's doing a thing that she enjoys doing, and it just happens that other people are enjoying it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, selling things is another thing you could do. It's not so passive, but if you're decluttering and getting rid of things that others might enjoy, that can be liberating and profitable. And again, it doesn't have to take you, you know, hour after hour once you've sort of taken your pictures and just posting them. You can also include, if you're really into it, though, yard sale fines and flea market fines and just continue, you know, posting these things. And so once you've taken your photos and written a description, that's really, you're, you're done with that work, right? It's, it's just out there and people will come across your beautiful little cup that they want to purchase. Another idea is going along the same lines of selling your items online. If you're a teacher, you've heard of this website called Teacher Pay Teachers, most assuredly. If you're not a teacher, this is a website where teachers create materials and sell them for other teachers to buy. That's something that could start with a small upfront fee. And again, it's just putting the content that you create on the website and then it's up, it's there and people buy it and you make money from it. And there's a really fun little bonus is the app makes a little cha-ching sound every time you make money, every time you make a sale. So you can just be sitting in your house doing other things and hear a little cha-ching. And so it truly feels very passive when you get your little cha-ching ding. <laughs> So this is something you've done. Yes, it is. But again, less like everything else, you have to keep up with it. So even though like you might have things on there and people could continue to buy them over time, but especially, you know, with, with teaching content, things are going to need to be updated. So you would have to continue to put, put new content up to, to really continue to make money on it. 
Fantastic. It's, and I assume it's something you needed for your classroom or you saw an, a need for. And so you made it, you have it. It just made sense to then share it in a financial way with other people. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that was a huge bonus. I was already making the content, then somebody else could benefit from it and I can sell it there as well. But the truth is there is no true passive income. Anything that makes money is going to take work. And like all things, you decide how much you want to put into it and that's how much you're going to get out of it. But a passion play job doesn't always feel like work. So find something that you really love that you can commit to. It will never seem like work. Yes. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Finances and Passive Income. We know that you chose to listen and are grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow or subscribe for free in your podcast provider and then share your favorite episode with a friend. Consider leaving a review because it brings financial education to others and helps people find us more easily. Please let us know what questions you'd like answered or what topics you'd like to hear that we could cover for you. And you can do that by going to our website at financesand.net and just leave us a message there. You can find infographics there as well as right here in our show notes. Finances And does not provide tax or legal advice and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such. Always consult a tax, accounting, or legal professional for advice on your specific situation. Remember, I went to school, so you don't have to. Bonus idea, sign up for a sleep study or a science experiment. (laughs) Yes, I think it's the science experiment that really (laughs) speaks to me. (laughs) I'm Jennifer and I'm here with Kathy. You lucky dog. (laughs) And... 